How should you bet game two of the NBA Finals on Sunday? Side? Total? That's what I'm about to get into here on Wager Talk TV. Now, as I'm sure you know by now, the Boston Celtics pretty much destroyed the Dallas Mavericks in game one, winning 107-89, and thus they easily covered the six-and-a-half point spread. Slightly bigger number for game two, although we've already seen some early Mavs money come in. The game two total, as of this recording, still sitting where it opened at 214 and a half. First off, big thank you to everyone who joined me in game one for an easy 4% winner on the Celtics minus six. I'm now 33 and 17. My last 50 NBA releases, 96, 65, and two overall. Going back to last year's finals, that's plus 69 units. Number two at Wager Talk during that time. Stay tuned for info on how you can get the rest of my NBA final selections, all of my MLB for the rest of June, plus the first two weeks of the Euro Cup, all for one low price. All right, though, game two. Got to be honest, guys, as I always am. Don't really like Dallas at plus seven. Thought the number was way too short in game one, obviously. And this is not a big enough adjustment by the odds makers, in my opinion. Thus, I definitely disagree with the early line move from plus seven and a half to plus seven. Now, where the Mavs can obviously improve, though, is at the offensive end. Just 89 points on 41.7% shooting, including seven of 27 three. In game one, not to mention they were just 12 of 19 from the free throw line, not helping themselves from the charity stripe. Mavs team total for game two has been set at 103 and a half. So we need 15 more points from them to go over that number. Can they do that? I think so. The key will be increasing their number of three point attempts, which will naturally lead to an increase in the number of makes from behind the arc. The Mavs have zero chance in this series, guys, if they are attempting 15 fewer threes compared to the Celtics, which was the case in game one. Remember, Boston, they were number one in the league in three-point attempts this season, but Dallas was number two. So these were the top two teams in three-point attempts. Uh, Dallas just simply needs to up their number. uh, They just need to up the volume, uh, should I say, from behind the arc on Sunday. Now, I know earlier this week on Wager Talk today, I said to bet Kyrie Irving under 23.8 points per game for this series. I'm obviously feeling pretty good about that bet right now because Irving scored just 12 on 6 of 19 shooting in game one. He was 0 for 5 from three-point range, and he didn't even attempt a single free throw in the game. My goodness. My thought is we will see better production out of Kyrie on Sunday. Meanwhile, Luka is Luka. He's going to get his as well. I think Boston's content with that. The role players, though, should offer greater contributions for the Mavs in Game 2. Certainly, they can't contribute any less than what we saw in Game 1. But what about Boston's offense? Well, crazy as it may seem, guys, I think there's reason to believe they, too, can improve uh, from what we saw in the first game. Brown and Tatum combined for just 38 points in Game 1. The fact that the Celtics got up so big early led to a bit of a second-half malaise, if you will, not just from the big two, but from the team as a whole in game uh, it, uh, in the second half there. Now, as a team, the Celtics were 16-42 of 42 on three-point attempts in game one. Here's a crazy stat for you. This blew me away. Boston made more threes in the first quarter of game one, seven, than the Jordan-led Chicago Bulls did in the entire 1991 finals. They made just five threes in five games. Just to illustrate how much the game has changed, 16 of 42 from Boston from three, nothing new. In fact, that's basically their exact average of makes and attempts per game this season. They they average going 16 of 42. So we're going to see more points in game two than we did in game one. No doubt about it in my mind. And I think you can expect the bulk of those points to come early. So take the first half over, 110, that number widely available right now. Boston averages 62.4 points per game in the first half this season. They just barely went over that number in game one with 63. Overall, Celtics game see an average of 116.9 points per game in the first half this season. Dallas, no slouch in that department either. They averaged 58.4 points in the first half, so they were way off the mark in game one. They had just 42 going into the break. For the season, though, Mavs games average 115.9 points per game in the first half. So one more time. First half over 110 is the play for game two. I don't think the game's getting over if the first half doesn't go over. So let me know what you think of that down in the comments section below. Don't forget to smash that like button. Give us the old thumbs up. We always appreciate the support. 
If you already haven't done so, make sure you're subscribed to the Wager Talk YouTube channel. That way you won't miss any of our exclusive sports betting content. And head on over to my page, wt.buzz slash bp, to take advantage of the rest of June's special we've got going on. Just $199 for that low price. You can get the rest of my NBA final selections, MLB for the rest of the month, and the Euros, the Euro Cup, a little soccer. Don't forget 17-5 and one run for from yours truly on the pitch. Every selection for the rest of the month, just $199. No coupon code needed. wt.buzz slash bp. That does it for me. Hope everyone has a great weekend. Until next time, let's cash some tickets.